Hello everyone. Um, just going to do some basic bits of code today, just to get you. I think with with minimal mechanics, you can get something working. If you've got a nice design, a nice level, um, just having two or three mechanics can actually turn it into you know a game, a partial game, get some ideas going. So we're just going to be using the level blueprint, uh, which you can find here up in the blueprints and level blueprint. Um, we're not going to be going too deep into this. I'm just going to keep this really simple, um, but simple is often best. Um, we're just going to get things like making that something that restarts the level, making objects appear and disappear, and maybe like a teleporter or something like that. We'll see what happens. So here we are. Um, I like to keep things tidy as well. So you've got your folder structure. If you can't see this here on the left hand side, uh, there's these little arrows. So you can click on that, show and hide the sources panel, and it makes it coming in and out like that. Um, if you click on the concept one, that's the top of the tree. Uh, right click again, make a new folder, and call it blueprints. Um, and that's just a nice neat tidy way of keeping everything that you make in its own little area but what we're going to do we're going to use static meshes uh, if I grab a basic I'm just going to grab something like a cube drag it into the world and cut we can apply things to this okay we could apply code to it at the moment it's a visible cube there it is happy sitting there in the world doing nothing and if we play the game when it loads it's there there it is we can jump on it and we can run around and we can do what we want. But say we wanted that thing to, I don't know, disappear or appear when we press a secret button over here or something. How are we going to do that? Um, simple way. So we were going to go over to here to our search classes. We're going to type in box and drag out a box trigger. And this looks very similar. It's got the same kind of controls as like a BSP, as, a, as an actual geometry object. So you can resize it. Uh, we can scale it. So like this. Like this, and think of it as like an invisible wall, or an invisible barrier where the player is going to walk into it and something's going to happen. And because we've placed it in the level, it's actually exposed and viewable in the level blueprint. So I was talking about this here again. So blueprints, level blueprints, um, and with it selected, so at the moment it's called trigger box. I can rename it to something a bit more useful, uh, like I don't know, trigger box appear, and over here, click back on my level blueprint, right click, I can say add an event for trigger box appear. Excellent. Double click that, collision, and I want to have when actor begins overlap. So click on that, and there it is. So what this is, this is an event box, and it says when the actor, or when an actor overlaps with something, we're going to have something happen. So when we run into it, let's go do something. Yeah. And what we're going to do, we're going to select this thing here, which is our, our block. We're going to right click and we're going to make a reference to the cube. Because it's in the world, because it's its own little thing in, in the level, we can get it. We can get references from it. We don't have to cast, we don't have to do all sorts of weird things. And I'm going to do, I'm going to round here, I'm going to go, I'm going to set the word visibility. I'm going to set visibility. And we're going to set this to, we'll set it to false. We'll leave it as false at the moment. So there's our visibility. We can say true or false, but at the moment it's set to true. So what I'm going to do, I press play now, walk into it. And it's gone. It is actually there. So that's another problem we've slightly got. So it is kind of like an invisible cube. But when I walk away, it's it's still gone, isn't it? And that's not good. So what you can do with the same thing, if I select that trigger box up here, go back out, right click, uh, trigger box up here, collision, end overlap, I can effectively copy this. Control C, Control V, paste that across there. Say so new visibility is true this time. Compile it, run it. So now we're going to run in. There it is. Run away. Comes back. There it goes up. There it goes down. There you are. Um, you might want that. That's that's quite a useful thing. Um, if you, you know, want to have a block that disappears or appears somewhere in your level, uh, you might have to. I don't know. You do a sequence of traps or jumping puzzles or something, and you you have to touch the button, which then extends the bridge or something like that and then the character can go to it. Um, it's a real simple mechanic and you can think about it in your level design could just help it get along a little bit more. Um, what else can we do? I'm going to do another little... I'm going to grab another box trigger drag that up, put it down uh, and again this is going to be our kill zone Okay, it's going to be something that kills us uh, but a simple way to kill on this we're just going to have it restart the level really simple. So I'm going to call this box trigger reload 
So again, you might have I don't know a lava pit underneath you, and if the character falls into the lava, we restart the level. Simple again. Um, with it selected, go back to our level, right click, um, add an event, collision, overlap. And what I haven't actually shown you, I'm just going to do one little quick thing, some way of helping you remember what this code does. Now if I drag around it and press C, this is going to be uh, set energy as false. Yeah, and this is going to be drag around C as true. Really simple stuff, but what it allows us to do, as long as we, when we start commenting our code, when we come back like two days later or three days later or whatever, or someone else looks at it, we can tell straight away what it is that, what's going on, what's happening. Um, but yeah, here we are. I'm going to do this. And again, this is so simple. I'm just going to type in open, open level. And what our level is called is actually on this one, it's a default one. You may have your level called a whole load of things. So this is called third person example map. You might have first person example map. You might call it egg, whatever your level is, who knows. But it's third person example map. And it has to be spelt right or it doesn't work. Let's double check. So let's try to play that. Play. There we are. Appear, disappear. Great. And oh, reload the level. Oh, reload the level. Cool. Simple mechanics. Yeah, so one last one we're going to do here. It's going to make a teleporter. And this could be fun. This could be fun for trolling people. This could be fun for, you know, setting up a thing you need to go somewhere in your environment very quickly or whatever. Um, where are we? We're going to drag another box trigger. Drag it into the world. And again, resize, make it how you want. There you go. Bring it up. Um, little trick I'm doing here, if you didn't know, if you have any object it is, if you sort of bring it in the in the air like this and then press end on your keyboard, what it does, it actually sinks it to the floor. So you're not going to be clipping through the geometry or, you know, having it sort of floating or anything like that. So it's a really useful tool. So bring it up, end it, and there it is, it's touching the floor. Um, and I'm going to call this one trigger box teleport. And Unreal's really useful. Unreal has like loads of pre-done things for you as well. It's just knowing them and using them right. Um, if we go into our level blueprint again. I'm just going to comment this. So this is going to be reload. Level. Cool. I'm going to make sure I've got this trigger box selected. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say event, collision, again, begin overlap. Fantastic. Um, now I'm going to drag out. I'm going to type the word teleport, funny enough. And Unreal has its own teleport system. That's freaking awesome. But it wants a location and it wants a target. So what you do, you drag the other actor, which is us in this situation, and we drag it to there. Again, this could be anything. You might want to teleport an object to this thing. You might want to, I don't know, take a gnome through the whole of Half-Life and teleport him along everywhere. Um, you know, this is a way of getting an object to a position. But it needs a destination. And you can, if you know the X, Y, and Z locate, um, coordinates, you can actually type them in and it will teleport you there. But that's really fiddly. You know, and it can be an absolute nightmare having to find sort of pinpoint locations. So what I do is, say I set something over here, if I type something out here called a target, you can get a target point. And you can dot these around your map, you can put them where you want, you can use them for all sorts of things. But there's just a little point in space, and I can click it, right click again, right, um, so yeah, got it selected here. Right click in the blueprint, go create a reference to the target. I'm going to drag out from this, the destination location. I'm going to type get actor oops, location. If I can spell, it'll work. Get actor location. There you go. And what is the actor we want? We want the target. So we join it all up. And this is going to be, we're going to see around that and teleport to actor. Cool. So then we compile, we save. And if all things are right, let's try them all out. That disappears, that comes back, that reads the level, and it's about here. Where are you? Come on. Take me away. There we are. Oop. Let's go back. There we are. We have been teleported up here. Awesome. You might want that. You could if you know, with these three simple things, you could you know, you could start building stuff. But yeah, if there's anything you want me to add, if there's any questions you want, if anything you want me to sort of you know, show you how to do, then please leave some comments, leave some feedback, and uh, I'll be making more of these. So thank you very much. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.